What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So in my most recent video, I did a layout video where I was putting some lines on a ball that I recently got called the Silver Bell. And a few people commented wondering what the lines all mean. So I have three more balls from Swag that just came in the mail today. I wasn't expecting them to arrive until Monday, but they came early. So awesome for me. We're going to get some lines on these balls. And in the process, I'm going to do my best to explain to you what the lines mean, what the numbers mean and everything as far as the system that I use, which is pin buffer. Now, there's different ways to lay out a ball these days. You've got the dual angle method, the pin buffer method. For the two handers, you've got the 2LS method. And then you've got a system that Mikey Pinnell has been working on developing recently. Um, he's still working on a name. Um, but it's similar to the 2LS method is actually him and his dad Mo Pinnell developed that particular layout system before the 2LS method came out so but anyway this is going to be from the perspective of the pin buffer method and I'm going to explain why I use that method because that's the method I use on all my equipment okay so for starters we're going to begin with the fantasy days now I already have this ball in my arsenal I because I bought that ball back when it first came out about a month ago. It's a great ball. I love it. I just wanted a second one because it's so good. I've got one laid out pin up. I'm going to lay out this one pin down, which is going to give us a little bit more control when we get on those tougher conditions. So let's put some lines on this ball. All right, so before I start putting lines on the ball, I'm going to describe basically what the three measurements mean. So with pin buffer, you've got three basic measurements. You've got your pin to PAP measurement, and what that is controlling is essentially the flare potential of the ball. So each bowling ball that comes out has a certain amount of differential in the core, which controls its overall flare amount. And you can basically control how much of that flare you would like to use. You either use all of it or less of it, depending on how you lay out the bowling ball. Now, as far as the pin to PAP measurements are concerned, um, for some bowlers, it needs to be in a certain area. If you uh, remember in my last video, I said that because I'm a high track player, my pin to PAP measurements usually need to stay in zone A. Uh, zone A is just a specific location on the ball with your pin to PAP measurement that that measurement has to stay in, and it covers a range. So really, it's about an inch difference. You know, it's three and a half inches to about four and a half inches. It's actually a little less than four and a half inches, but I use four and a half as my longest pin to PAP measurement and what we're doing there is we're controlling how much flare of the ball we're going to be using so the closer to three and a half we get the more overall flare of the ball we're going to be using and the more the ball flares the more it's going to hook in the front part of the lane and the uh, faster it's going to slow down as it goes down the lane okay the further away from the three and a half that we get so the closer we get to four inches and four and a half inches the less flare of the ball you're going to be using overall. Also, it changes the dynamics of the core inside the ball. So closer to three and a half, the core is at a very unstable position, which is what makes the bowling ball use the majority of its flare. Uh, the longer that measurement gets closer to four and a half and five inches and past five inches, the more that core is standing more vertical, which is what makes it more stable. So it decreases the overall flare of the bowling ball. Okay, so to put lines on a bowling ball, we're going to be using a tool called a Prosect. I don't know if uh, any of you guys have really seen one of these before, but a Prosect is how we measure the circumference of the ball to put certain measurements on the ball. On one side, we basically have a ruler that goes from 0 to 6 inches, 0 to 6 inches, and then if you flip it around on the other side, this is what you would use for dual angle. Again, dual angle is something I don't use just because I find pin buffer to be a little bit easier to control very fine dynamics of my layouts. So we're going to start with my pin to PAP. Now, on this particular ball, because it's going to be a pin down layout for me, I'm going to keep the pin a little bit taller as opposed to shorter because I want more control out of this ball. So I'm going to make the pin to PAP on this probably four, maybe four and a half inches. I haven't really decided yet, but let's start with, oh, let's start with four and a half. So we're going to put the zero of the ProSec directly on the center of our pin. And then we're going to measure to our where our PAP should be, which is going to be on this side of the ball. So this here is your pin. This is your CG for a right-handed bowler. Your PAP is always on the right side of that. If you were a left-handed bowler, it would be on the left side of that. So measure down to four and a half, and we're going to make a mark. And we need to make a series of marks so we can essentially connect the dots in order to draw a line on the ball. Okay, so there's three marks. We'll draw a single arc here. 
and we need to draw a theoretical PSA. And symmetrical bowling balls, which this happens to be, they do not have a PSA, so we're going to give it a location for a PSA right here. The PSA to PAP measurement on the bowling ball, if the ball had a PSA, is what gives the ball a little bit higher performance. So asymmetric bowling balls have a PSA on them, which is intermediate differential. That's what gives the ball its asymmetry. And as far as what that particular measurement does, it more or less defines what kind of a shape the ball gets at the end of the pattern. So balls that have a stronger PSA will give you a little bit more shape off the end of the pattern. Balls that have not so much of a strong PSA will give you quite a bit less shape off the end of the pattern. That's the easiest way to remember it. We are going to give it essentially a four inch PSA to PAP. Again, it's not going to do anything as far as the overall reaction of the bowling ball, but we need to connect three different points for the pin buffer system in order to make the system work. So just like before, if this was an asymmetrical ball, changing the distance of the PSA to PAP is going to either, either give it a stronger shape off the back or a weaker shape off the back. Like I said before, we're just going to go with 4 inches because it doesn't really matter anyway. There's our intersection for where our PAP is going to be located. The last measurement in the pin buffer system is, of course, the pin buffer. Now, the pin buffer is what is going to change the overall differential of the bowling ball based upon where the holes are placed. So if we have a longer pin buffer measurement, what we're doing is we're decreasing the differential of the ball, which has the side effect of decreasing the overall flare of the bowling ball. If we have a shorter pin buffer measurement, that increases the overall flare of the bowling ball, which of course increases the flare potential. So for example, if I wanted to lay out a bowling ball to have the most hook in the front part of the lane, I would give it of course a pin to PAP of three and a half inches, which is maximum leverage, the maximum imbalance point of the core. And then I would combine that with a pin buffer of usually an inch, maybe inch and a half. I wouldn't want to go any higher than that because I'm trying to make the ball hook as much as possible in the front part of the lane. So I want to increase the overall differential as far as decrease the overall differential. In this case, what we want is more of a controlled shape. We want less flare on this ball and we want less shape on the back part of the lane for this ball, which is going to allow us to you know, play in uh, straighter angles on the lane and also use this particular ball when the lanes are hooking a little bit. So we gave it a four and a half inch pin to PAP. We're gonna combine that with a fairly large pin buffer. I'm gonna go with two inches because that's pretty much my standard size or length for the pin buffer when I'm going pin down. Okay, so to give it a pin buffer measurement, we're gonna again take the prosect and we're gonna center it with the zero on the pin. And then what we're doing here is we're measuring across to our proper measurement. So I, I said I was gonna give it a two inch pin buffer. So we're gonna start with a mark right here at two inches. And then of course we need to make a series of marks so we can connect the dots. Sorry about the background noise. My kids are going crazy in their bedroom. So as you can see here, we've essentially created an arc. Let's connect all the dots. And there is our pin buffer arc. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line that goes tangent. And tangent means it basically touches the pin buffer line. It starts at the intersection of the PAP, runs tangent to the pin buffer. Now, what I like to do is I like to start with the prosect zeroed where my PAP location is at. Because it makes it easy for me to mark my PAP measurement when I'm done. And then I touch it up to that line because we're drawing it tangent. We start here and we're going to draw what's called the VAL, the vertical axis line. Not vertical axis, but vertical axis as in X, Y, Z axis. And there is our VAL. Now at this point, all we really have to do is map out our PAP, which is going to get us to the center of grip line. Uh, PAP, positive axis points, are different for every bowler, depending on how you throw the ball. Uh, you are going to have an over measurement as well as an upper or down measurement on that VAL line. I am five inches over and an inch and an eighth up if I was to draw the PAP back from a center of grip. So in order to, of course, trace this back to get my center of grip line, I need to reverse that. So I'm going to go an inch and an eighth down on the VAL line and then five inches over, and that'll give me my center of grip. Okay, so we're going to put the prosect again, zeroed at the PAP mark. 
which is right there roughly. And then we're going to measure down an inch and an eighth and put a mark right here. And right there is where my PAP is located. And now we're going to take the prosect and put the zero at that new mark that we just made. Make sure the rib here is lined up with the VAL line. And then we're going to go over five inches because I'm five over and we're going to put a mark. And then we're going to draw a horizontal line this way. Right here at this intersection is my center of grip line. So essentially when we put holes in this ball, or the Pro Shop puts holes in this ball, my palm is going to sit essentially right here. My finger holes will be up here, my thumb hole will be down here. Now the last thing we have to do is determine where the thumb is going to be and where the fingers are going to be. Now normally speaking, the Pro Shop will do this for me, but because I know what my measurements are, I'm going to go ahead and put that on the ball anyway. So I'm going to take the zero and put it at my center of grip intersection. Make sure the rib lines up with my over line for my PAP, and the zero is there. Okay, and now I know that my thumb is two and three eighths down, so we're gonna go two and three eighths and put a mark, and then draw a line. And I know my fingers are two and three eighths up, so we're gonna again put a mark, and then draw another line. So essentially what we have here, at this line here, is where my fingers will be roughly located, and at this line down here, is where my thumb is going to be located. So in the end, it's gonna look, you know, something similar to this here. So we've got our ring finger there, middle finger there. Obviously, they're gonna be a lot bigger than that, but, and our thumb hole is gonna be in this zone. So there is a four and a half by two layout on my new Fantasy Days. Thanks for watching the video today. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.